So why are people so depressed? Why are people so afraid? Because you see everywhere fear, fear that the climate is going to kill us all, fear that the air we breathe is getting worse, not better, fear that somehow technology is going to dominate us. I mean, uh, just, just a couple of years ago, I remember every second story was about AI, artificial intelligence, was going to take over our lives and kill us all or replace us or do something horrific to us that the future was bleak. I mean, it's almost like human beings have this need to believe the world is gonna to come to an end, right? We have in religion, what are called millennial cults, cults that every few decades rise up and say, okay, it's the end of the world now. That, you know, this decade, the end is gonna, the world is gonna end, Jesus is coming back and we're all gonna have, uh, you know, whatever happens when Jesus comes back, I, I'm not up to my scriptures, but, this idea of end of world, this idea of disaster, this idea of we're killing ourselves is somehow something that serves some psychological need that human beings have, but it is counter to the facts, counter to reality. Again, life has never been better on planet earth and there's no reason to believe if we do the right things, that life will not be better a hundred years from now. Life won't be even better a thousand years from now, humanly. Progress is movement towards greater values, movement towards greater life, movement towards better, greater when it comes to human life. Progress is the recognition that human life is the standard of value. To evaluate something as good or evil, one has to have a standard. By what standard? We are human. Each one of us is his own standard. My life is my standard. Rand, Ayn Rand teaches us the morality is not about sacrificing, dying, helping the humanity. Morality is about living the best life you can live for yourself. It's about achieving your own happiness. It's about discovering the values that are necessary to live a good life, a successful life as a human being. It means using your mind to choose the values that are going to lead you towards success as a human being. Spiritual, material values, the values necessary for you to thrive. So morality is about the individual. But if morality is about each individual pursuing his life, making his life the best that it can be, if morality is about each individual pursuing their happiness, then progress in a, in a social context is individuals making their lives better. What is progress after all, if not making my life better? And when we think about ethics, in society, then what is, what is it? If, we, if all individuals are pursuing their life, pursuing their values, trying to make their life better, as a group, what are they doing? Well, they're um, enhancing human life. They're bettering human life. And from a societal perspective, what we need is to create a political system that enables people to pursue their happiness, that enables people as individuals to pursue the values necessary for them to live a good, successful life. So that which makes it possible for individuals to pursue a good life is the good. That which damages it, that which holds it back, that which suppresses the ability of individuals to pursue their values to pursue their happiness is evil. Progress is the manifestation of individuals pursuing their values. It's a manifestation of people wanting their life to get better. It's not a decision we make. Our responsibility as a, as a you know, group, as a, if we will, is to facilitate individual freedom. 
It's to facilitate the ability of individuals to live. And the result of leaving individuals to live, we've seen this time and time again all over the world, everywhere, is progress. Progress is the outcome. The outcome of leaving individuals free. The outcome of individuals trying to make their lives as individuals better. The outcome of not trying to dictate to individuals what values they should pursue and how they should live. Freedom will always result in progress because human beings cannot stand for stagnation. Stagnation, when do we stagnate? When is the time we're most stagnant? Well, when we're dead. Life requires an active process. Life requires constant engagement. Life requires the pursuit of values, the constant pursuit of values. So to be anti-progress is to be anti-human life. To be anti-progress is to be anti-human freedom. To be anti-progress is to be on the side of death and destruction, which aren't necessarily immoral. Life is the standard of morality. Human life is the standard of morality. Individual human life is the standard of morality. And to advocate against progress is to advocate against individual human life. It's to advocate indivi against individual human progress. Now, many environmentalists would argue that human beings are destroying the planet. We're creating havoc you know, in the environment. But what does that mean? Are we destroying the planet? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Everything that we have as human beings has come from us reshaping our environment, reshaping our planet. Human beings are not neutral when it comes to survival. We don't just accept the environment as it is and figure out how to live within it. What do we do? We chop down trees and build huts. We take away grasslands and forests and plant agriculture. We demolish hills to use the, 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 you know, the gravel, the rock, to make cement, to build skyscrapers. We pave roads from point A to point B when we need to get somewhere. Human beings change the environment. It's how we survive. It's how we progress. It's how we live. If we stop changing our environment, we die as a species. We cannot compete at the material level. There are 8 billion people in the world today. The only reason 8 billion people can stay alive is because they're constantly reshaping nature around them. They're constantly remaking the planet. And they're constantly, as we do this, improving human life. 30 years ago, about 30% of the world lived in extreme poverty. Today, 8% of the world lives in extreme poverty. Hopefully, within 20 years, 0% of the world will live in extreme poverty. The only way to do that is to change our environment. The only way to do that is to reshape the planet. Why do we care about the planet? Why do we care about the environment? Well, I care only 
in the sense that it affects human life. The standard is still the same. The standard is human life. If changing the environment is good for human life, then great. If changing the environment is bad for human life, we need to solve the problem. But the burden needs to be to prove that changing stuff hurts human life. Because so far, we've been changing the planet for the last, I don't know, how long have human beings been around? But suddenly, since the agricultural revolution and even before that, for 10,000 years, and life keeps getting better. Human life keeps getting better. We keep living longer, longer, healthier, and cool. I mean, look at this. I'm giving a lecture in France. But, well, unfortunately, I can't actually be in France using a technology that just 10 years ago didn't really exist. A company that most people around the world never heard of until recently called Zoom. In spite of authoritarian governments shutting us down at home, we are still communicating. We are still running conferences. We're still engaging in exchange. Why? Because we've changed nature turned it into fiber optics, put cables under the ocean, put satellites into space so that we can communicate in spite of being thousands of miles away. So the standard for environmentalism, the standard for what is good or bad is human life, not the state of the planet, not some people's fears, but what is objectively good or bad for human life? It's clearly, if you're engaged in an activity that is hurting other people, that is literally destroying life, and, you, and people can prove that, then it is the role of government to stop you from engaging in those activities. But we don't need you know, big government, we don't need large institutions, whole agencies to tell us that. Uh, that's been around in common law for hundreds of years. So human beings survive by changing their environment. Environmental change is necessary for human survival and for human thriving. Progress is necessary for human survival and human thriving. When we stop progressing in history, we decline. In life generally, not just when you talk about economic or social progress, in life generally, you either movement, you're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. Standing still is not an option. Living beings move, they act. It's either towards life or towards death. Progress is life. That's why it's moral. Progress is what individuals do when they're left free. That's why it's moral. Progress is pro success, pro happiness, pro human values. That's why it's moral. And anybody trying to stop us is advocating for death and destruction, advocating for poverty. We've seen this. We've seen civilizations where progress has stopped. When that happens, people don't just stay at where they are. Things get worse and things can get worse fast. So environmentalists who are claiming that progress is bad don't understand what it takes to keep human beings alive to keep human beings, to, to allow human beings to achieve happiness and success. Environmentalists who advocate for the environment, they think the environment has some value beyond its value to us as human beings. But when talking about value, Ayn Rand always asks a very fundamental, important question. Value to whom and for what? To be a value, it has to be a value for something. There is no values external to human beings. Unless you believe in 
aliens and God, then maybe there's a value to God and values to the aliens. But the only thing we know out there that exists is life on planet Earth. You have to have a living thing that values something. Otherwise, it's not a value. It's a value to somebody and for a particular purpose. And the end of that purpose, the purpose is your life, your successful life. So the environment is a value to me because I breathe the air, I drink the water, I live within it. But it's also a value to me because it has the resources I need to consume. It has the rare earth metals that make my iPhone possible. It provides me with the trees that I need to chop down to build my house. It provides me with all the resources I need to make my life better. So the environment is a value because I can exploit it. It's a value to me to the extent that I exploit it. The idea of stopping the exploitation of the environment is the idea of giving up on human life. So to fight this, I think there are two important points. Morally, we have to understand that the standard of morality is human life. And human life requires achievement. It requires challenges. It requires values. And therefore, human life requires progress. The number of human beings on planet Earth is probably going to grow, at least for a while. That requires growth. It necessitates growth. If we care about poverty, that necessitates growth. If we care about any individual being able to make the most of their life, then we value growth and progress. So point one is human life requires progress and human life is the standard of value. Therefore, progress is more. And second, the consequence of progress are wonderful for human life. I mean, it's inspiring to see the technology. It's inspiring to see the architecture. It's inspiring to see the technology that, that the modern world is comprised of. It's inspiring to be able to be in my home in Puerto Rico and deliver these remarks to you wherever you may be. Some of you in France, there might even be some people on YouTube from all over the world. That's progress. Life is pretty amazing. Your life is pretty amazing if you take it seriously, if you choose to make the most of it. Don't let the, uh, the fear mongers depress you into not wanting, not striving, not pushing yourself to live to the max. So live. Progress is about life. If we value life, we must value progress. Thank you. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want, to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this 
Uh, and, and you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.